All right, for a fun video today, I thought we should make one of those witches that's crashed into the side of the house so you can hang it on the end of your dollhouse. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. Alright, I'm starting this witch in no particular order. I'm actually doing the polymer clay first because I need to get done with the polymer clay so I can use my oven for something else while I'm doing the rest of the witch. So I'm going to start by pre-baking a small amount of green clay. Oh, by the way, the colors of clay we're using. I have a scrap of any green. This is going to be our witch's hands. And then I have a scrap of black. And literally both of these came out of my clay scrap bag. They were left over from other projects. I think this it actually had some orange attached to it. I think it's probably left over from that Halloween candy I made a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen that video, that's a fun one. Now I'm going to roll out a very, very, very thin snake. And this is only going to need about five minutes of baking. I'm going to roll out something very, very thin. And then we're going to cut some little, little short pieces. We're going to cut 10 of them. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're going to put those onto our paper plate. And I'm going to bake those at 275 for about 5 minutes. I just need to get these hard so that when I go to stick them into our witch hands, whoops, Let's cut a couple of extra little pieces because that piece got all tangled up. We'll just cut a couple of extra pieces overall so I don't stick them all on. All right, I'm going to go bake this off for five minutes and I'll be back and we'll work on the next step. All right, I have our little fingers all baked off and now I'm taking the same green clay and making a couple of little balls. And I've got two toothpicks, and I've got some TLS. And I just need just a little bit of TLS on the tip. I'm going to stick it into the ball of clay, and I'm going to flatten it. Now, my witch is very, very loosely based on a picture of a crashed witch decoration that I saw online. I just Googled it, I saw some I liked, and I thought, okay, this one is kind of, the one I'm making is kind of very loosely based. So I'm going to put just a little more TLS on my tray. I don't want too much because I don't want to waste it. And now I'm going to get these over here. These are the baked off pieces. And I'm going to attempt to get the fingers which, and if it doesn't look, if they're not perfect, that's okay. She's not meant to be perfect. She's, she's having a bad day, okay? She's crashed into wherever you're putting her. So I got a pair of tweezers. I'm going to take one of these. Let's see. First, let's turn this around so it'll be easier to work on. I'm going to unstick it from my tray anyway. I have... TLS all over my, my work tray. All right. Now, dip the baked clay into the TLS so that it will kind of glue it to our fresh clay. Go in there straight. And because this clay, I, I don't even know what kind of clay this green is. It's very soft. So it's, it's kind of arguing with me, but that's okay.
So I am going to transfer this to a parchment line uh, paper plate and then I'm going to do the fingers on this hand and then when those are done I'll come back and we'll make the boots. All right now we just have that scrap black clay and we are going to start by rolling a little snake. I'm going to cut off four small pieces, ish, small-ish pieces. And those are going to become mm, kind of ball shaped. Now we're going to make a snake. Kind of a chunky snake. And I've got a doll here, so I can. Yeah, that's about right. Do that. And we're going to cut off a little more off of there. And we want to roll a long point. We'll see why in a moment. We don't need that green clay there. And we're going to make this one. And we're going to try and make these match at least somewhat. Now, toothpick. Dip it into your TLS. Dip it in a ways. Put a clay ball in one of these. And then another ball. Now, kind of mold this part together. I'm going to kind of stand it like this and roll that toe and we have a witch's shoe. Let's do that with this guy too. Oops, I forgot the ball. Clay ball first, then our snake then another clay ball. Then roll up that toe. And you could just make the witch's feet paint the sticks with stripes and put them upside down out of the ground with the feet sticking up. That would be really cute too. Okay. Oopsie. Let's see if I can fiddle with this and make it kind of sort of match the other one. At least somewhat. All right, so I'm going to go bake these, the boots and the hands. Let's go ahead and get these all on the tray and I'll show you what they look like. I'm going to bake all of these at 275 for about 10 minutes. Then I'll come back and we'll do some more stuff. All right. Our feet and our shoes and our hands are baked off. They're ready to go. We're now going to paint the legs. Any orange, but I'm going to make my witch have orange legs. Yours can have whatever color legs you want. Remember, this is just, it's just a fun project. And I'm just going to paint those toothpicks. We're not going to see very much of it, but I want to paint it up far enough that I won't see the plain wood anywhere. I'm trying to keep it off of our shoes. All right, now that paint needs to dry. I put the paint on there so that I wouldn't get it all over my tile. Now, I'm gonna put my paintbrush off to the side and hopefully remember to wash it in a little bit. Now I have some black. This is a nice heavy cardstock and this is a clay cutter actually. Um, it is it's about an inch and a half in diameter. This doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to trace around it. Whoops. And then I'm going to cut out that circle. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if your witch is a little worse for wear, that's fine because 
After all, she's having a really rough day. She's running to wherever you're going to put her. All right, now I have some very lightweight black paper. Uh, I picked this up at Hobby Lobby, I for, or not Hobby Lobby, at Walmart. I forget what they called it, but it was over at their scrapbooking stuff. It was way lighter than I thought it was going to be. Uh, any lightweight black paper will work. And I'm going to, where's my container? I have, I have this container that I a lot of times use for, oh, for putting water for paint and stuff in. And I'm just going to trace around the bottom of it. I found that is a good size. I've actually done one of these witches already. Made my mistakes on the one that I've already done. So that hopefully you won't have to see me try and work this process out. Because I literally was making it up as I went as I made that other witch. All right, so again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm going to fold this in half because we're only going to use half of this. You could use the heavier paper if you don't have the lighter, but it's going to be really hard to make a cone out of the heavier. And that's all we're going to do is we're going to make a cone. Just like that. I'm going to glue right here. so that the top is closed. It doesn't have to be a perfect cone. And now I have part of a cotton ball here. And it's now stuck to my fingers. But I'm going to use that to help me glue this together because this would be a very thin edge to glue to our brim of our hat. But by putting that in there, shoving this little cotton ball down in here, and don't worry if a little cotton shows, we're gonna cut off, cut off the excess here. Kind of give it a little bit of a haircut. This works when you've got to glue things that don't really aren't really going to want to stay together. I'm going to use a toothpick to push that down because it's sticking to my fingers so badly. Yeah, it's going to stick to that too. Okay. And we are going to push that down. that and I'm going to let this dry for a bit so when this is when this glue is dried I'll come back and we'll by that time our legs should also be dry and we can go on to the next step all right I ended up adding a little more glue to keep that on and then since I squirt it squirted out all over the brim I went ahead and just coated it in glue so now we're gonna add some sparkle because after all, our witch has got to be a little sparkly. So I'm going to run a bead of glue. And if I was smart, I probably would have done this with a toothpick or a brush, but you know, whatever. And then I am going to put some orange glitter. And I'm doing this over a sheet of paper so that I can just pour my glitter back in here. And this glitter is nail art glitter that I picked up at Dollar Tree quite a while ago. But you can use any glitter. It's a good way to get some pretty glitters that are relatively inexpensive. I mean, you're a dollar for little tiny containers, but... And it usually comes in several different varieties. Alright, I'm going to use a toothpick to kind of 
press that down into the glue and I am actually just going to leave it like this and give that glue a chance to dry and then when the glue's dry I'll come back we'll shake the glitter excess glitter off onto the paper put it back in the bag and go on to the next step all right the glue on our glitter is thoroughly dried because this is like two days later uh, I'm using just an old paintbrush to brush away at least some of the excess glitter All right, now that's done. Now, I'm going to get this back into its bag. But this way, I salvage all that extra glitter and I'll have it for the next project. Come on. Well, I'm going to do this off camera and I'm going to get my stuff back and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, we're going to make something that will look like a broom that our witch has been riding before she had her unfortunate accident with the side of our dollhouse. So what I've got here is one of those ginormous craft sticks from Walmart and some beige embroidery floss. Now, I wouldn't do this for a broom that I wanted to use in the dollhouse as a real broom. Maybe for one of those decorative cinnamon scented ones that you can get at Christmas, this might work by changing your colors. Um, but we're, what we're doing here is I'm just making a really simple tassel. And it's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're, we're not going to see this really well. This just needs to stick out from underneath the back of her coat or whatever it is she's wearing. Okay. Slide it off of here. And we're not even making this totally the way I would, if I was making this as a tassel, I would be a lot more careful with. This is just a quick thing that will work and give the impression that we've got a, that she's on a broom. If I can get this tied, I may have to turn the camera off and tie this little string. I'm going to have to because I'm going to have to get this up to my face to tie it. I'll be right back. All right, got it tied. Just had to have it where I could see it. And now we're going to just trim those. Make sure you get all your little loopies trimmed. Trim off any really wayward strands there. And now we're going to take a toothpick and some glue. And I'm just putting some glue off to the side of my table here, my tray. And I'm going to do this in there. not glue in first, kind of just up through the center of this tassel. Come on. There we go. And I'm going to put a little more glue. Like I said, this isn't going to really show much. It's just going to be the impression that it's a broom. All right, now I have a craft stick. And I have, oh, I need to get some black paper too. I have all our parts we've been making. Now, if you wanted to decorate her little legs, you could draw little black stripes on them. You could do anything you want. Okay, that's up to you. I am going to get a piece, another piece of this really thin paper. And I'm going to cut a rectangle. It's not even all that, all that straight. I'm going to roll it around a pencil. 
so that it wants to form a tube. That way I can trim these to the size I want. because I want it to stay and these have a tendency to want to unroll. are just those clamps you can get at Dollar Tree. All right, now I have a craft stick. At the top of, <clears throat> excuse me, at the top of our craft stick, we put some glue, and I'm going to put our hat. I want it so it lines up pretty well with the top and gets somewhat centered. So I want that to get pretty pretty stuck down. Yeah. I'm going to get wet wipe before I do the next step because this is going to get really sticky. I'm going to get I'm going to give my witch a little bit of shape here. I've just got a cotton ball. And we're gonna we're gonna pad our witch a little bit here. So she's not quite so flat. This is all gonna get covered with paper anyway. And now we're gonna put this. And I am going to stick this up as far as I can. I'm actually going to clamp this down and I'm going to let all this glue dry because as you can see, everything wants to slide. So I want this glue to dry and when this is all dry, I'll come back and we'll go to the next step. All right, so our glue is pretty dried on there, and the road work has quit outside my window. So <laughs> we are going to kind of get these, and try and make this as even as I can. Because I'm going to glue these on. I'm going to glue those right about there, I think. And then I'll probably trim them. So let's trim them first. These are probably a little longer than I want for our witch's arms. That's probably good enough. A little more glue. Once we get all this done, then we can glue in our parts that we made. There, that one there. Oops. My apple put the glue on it. Yeah, let's get our clamp there. 
And now we are going to glue our feet on. And I want them eh, probably about that kind of angle. So let's trim these so that they'll fit right next to that. And in my opinion, her feet don't have to go out at the same angle. So if I don't get them perfectly even, I'm okay with that. I'm going to have to deal with uh, let's see, how can I do this? Use the small clamps. Okay, I'll put you over here. Actually, let me go get my super glue. All right. When it doesn't want to cooperate, we'll just make it cooperate. I'm going to let that super glue dry a little bit, and then I'm going to glue the other leg on. And when both legs are glued on and dried, I'll come back and we'll go to our next step. All right, to get this to stay, what I did is I, I super glued them on and then I covered the area in tacky glue. And then I used a toothpick to poke down just a little bit of a cotton ball. That will hold everything together. And the glue is fairly well dried. So now we're going to start dressing our witch. And the first, I'm going to cut a piece of this paper that's a little shorter. I just wanted to cover this part right now because I'm going to, and yours is going to be a little bit different than mine because yours is going to be probably layered on the um, craft stick just a little bit differently. And that's okay because what, what I want to do is I want to make sure everything is kind of, kind of, Covered here. Let me see how many times that. Yeah, that's probably about right. So I'm going to put some glue. Note to self: open bottle of glue before turning on camera next time. Because we want to make sure that that's that this is all put together pretty securely, so it doesn't all fall apart, and uh, we don't want any of that cotton showing when we're done. I just want to kind of pat her so she doesn't look quite so scrawny. All right. I'm do that. And I'm actually going to use some clamps and just clamp her. Now, at the same time, I'm going to cut the toothpicks down on these guys because we might as well get our hands glued on too. Don't need to be real accurate because they're going to be shoved down into the sleeves. This is why we used a tube of paper here. to wipe as much of the glue off my fingers as I can so I don't get too much glue on her. Seems like every time I try to turn on the camera to record, either there's work in the street that's really loud. My neighbors had an argument earlier that carried into the hallway, so that was nice and loud. Uh, it's just one of those days, I guess. And, this video, and I'm actually recording on Monday to go up on Tuesday, which is very unusual. Usually I would have this already loaded and scheduled by Friday. 
So I'm going to let this glue dry for a little bit, as long as I can, and then I'm going to come back and we are going to finish our witch and see how she looks stuck on the side of the dollhouse. All right, I think this is dried enough to unclamp it. Oops, there we go. Now, hopefully nobody falls off. Now, I've got a piece of paper, and it's already all crinkled up because I've been kind of playing with this. What I think we want to do, I'm going to make like a cape to kind of cover our little witch here. And I want to have this come... I'm not really measuring per se, I'm measuring against my witch. And your witch will probably be a slightly different size than my witch. Okay. Now I'm going to make, what I'm hoping to do here is kind of folding. Hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. I want to make this look kind of pleated. So it looks kind of like she's gone on a cape. That's kind of my vision here. Now I'm going to trim that off and that off, but I'm going to leave that one showing. All right. Yeah, that's okay, but I want to go shorter. So, all right, so we're going to out and do that that length. You kind of see in this as I'm making, I'm making this up as I go, okay? To be honest, this part I had not previously worked out in my head. I partially made a witch, but I didn't get this far, just to kind of work out some of the kinks in what I wanted to do, and uh, oh, I like how that looks. Okay, that's that's what I'm after. All right, so we're going to add some glue, and I don't know how you guys felt when I'm watching a video of someone making something. I really enjoy seeing the the thought process and hearing the thought process as they're working things out. I'm hoping that at least some of you feel the same way. Uh, that's why I'm leaving this in here. Besides that, I'm running really late in getting this filmed. So, I'm just gonna put glue there. And we are going to... Now you could add hair to your witch if you want to. I chose not to. I, uh, I didn't think she needed hair. But if you feel like you want to add hair to yours, go for it. I would put it on before I put the hat on. All right, so now that glue is going to need, oh, a little while to dry. And when that's all dry, we'll come back and we will stick this on the side of the dollhouse and see how she looks. All right, since I am running out of time, Time to get this finished. I think she'll do, she's dry enough. I hit her with the heat gun to dry the worst of the glue. Now I did off camera sneak some glue onto that crap, to that paper that was wrapping the crap stick and kind of glued this down just so it would stay together better. And I do notice that my crap stick is sticking up past her hat. And I don't know how much that's going to show when I go to put her somewhere. So I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of a sharpie. I'm also going to go around the outside of my hat because I see that the paper I, the cardstock that I used, the heavy cardstock, was apparently a white core. And since I didn't get it cut perfectly round, I want to fix that. So let's turn the camera off. Let's move over by the dollhouse. I'm going to stick her onto the side of the dollhouse and we'll see how she looks. All right, so we've got the end of the Beachside Bungalow here, and what I've got is I've got some of this blue poster tack. I feel comfortable using that on painted surfaces in my dollhouse. I would not use it on the wallpaper, especially not the blue. Um, but for a short, period, short time on the uh, painted, I'm comfortable with it. Let's see, I'm going to make this sure this is where you guys can see it. But there she is. 
she is she's hit the end of the dollhouse I hope you enjoyed today's project. I hope you um, learned something. And if you make one, I'd love to see it. Be sure and post it on the Facebook group or send me a photo on my email. Um, if you like the video, I would love it if you'd push that like button. Leave me a comment. If you haven't subscribed and you enjoy my content, be sure and hit that subscription button and the notification bell. Check the blog post. I'll try to have some photos over there. And be sure to check the Facebook group too, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.